Hallelujah. Looks like I've not been here in five years. Amen. Let's lift our hands to Jesus and give him praise for his honor, his privilege, and what he's given us. The Bible says this honor no man take to himself, express your gratitude, not just for the gatherings, but for all of us who are witnesses today in this moment. Father, we thank you. Go ahead and bless him. Bless him in the way that you know most. Give him thanks. It means to sing a song of praise, you are still right. It means to pour out your heart of gratitude, you are still right. Lord, we thank you for glory, for power, for wisdom. Indeed, it comes from you. It is in your power to make great. You are the lifter of men. You are the only one who is able to help a man and help a people. We are men and women. We are ministry that you have so greatly led. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Let me honor our fathers, Daddy Mary and Daddy Tola. Please give them a big, big God bless you. And then our mother, um, Dr. Mrs. Onu, let's honor her. We do not take their presence for granted. Amen. Let me start tonight by asking us to appreciate the coordinator of the School of Ministry. Hallelujah. And all the coordinators who have worked with him laboring together, please let's give them a big God bless you. Please rise. Please rise. Let's give them a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And the Bible ends by saying, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. The mandate to be a blessing to the globe is not one that is unique just to the School of Ministry students, nor is it one that is unique to a man of, a man of God, a woman of God, any preacher somewhere. It's a mandate that is for everyone, that among the many things you must do for the kingdom within your lifetime is to be a blessing through your life, through the efficiency of your witness, that the citizen will be appreciative and grateful to you. Give them a big God bless you. This guy go everywhere. God bless you, my dear people. Hallelujah. So, the School of Ministry is our contribution to helping people fulfill this mandate of being a blessing. And I'm glad that he's here. Because he spoke to Abraham. Abraham just came out of all sorts of barriers. And yet he told him that in thee, through you, through your life, through the efficiency of your witness, he said, all the families of the earth, Lord said, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, you read verse 2, then we go to verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 2, you read verse 2 and then verse 5. He says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same permit thou to faithful men, not willing men, not just intelligent men, permit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So Paul is charging his son in the gospel. He's saying the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses. He says, permit them. Make sure you do not die with this investment of God upon your life. Permit it to faithful men who will permit, will be able to teach others also. This is the idea behind the school of ministry, to be able to pour into as many willing, zealous, faithful hearts that which God has shown and helped us to see by his mercy to the end that we replicate the possibility for reaching the globe with the wisdom, the power, the grace of God. And I'm very excited to be graduating this set 
Uh, I will give you a very quick chart, and then we'll go straight uh, to the impartation. Verse 5, same Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. He says, and if a man also strive for mastery, yet he is not crowned except he strives lawfully. The meaning of that is that nobody becomes a champion. Nobody becomes a master just in Christ. You can start just in, but there is the realm of competence, the realm of proficiency, where you are no longer just in. You have laid hold on power. Hallelujah. I'm sure that you may have heard it at least once in the course of your lecture for the students, that when it comes to knowing God, our learning him never ends. Even in heaven, we still learn God. But believe me when I tell you that when it has to do with living a life of dominion and grace, the knowledge you need are finite. You can lay hold of it. Like a student exhausts a curriculum, learning continues even afterwards, but he's exhausted that body of knowledge. An individual can, through structured mentorship, exhaust the body of knowledge that makes for an excelling life in the kingdom an excelling life in the spirit. Hallelujah. You can lay hold on eternal life. And unfortunately, there are many people who have not paid attention to be methodically mentored, to structurally learn how to live a life of victory. There is no guessing about living a life of victory. Every man's work will be tested eventually. Are we together now? And the Bible says that in a great house, there are all kinds of vessels. And it says some vessels already, by their disalignment, are vessels unto discard. Whereas others are vessels unto honor. Then it says, if a man will purge himself, that man will be a vessel unto honor, meet for the master's use. I can tell you that God is in need of people. You would think because there are so many preachers so many churches, so many people doing great things for the Lord. I am always overwhelmed by these statistics that we have now a little above 8 billion people upon the earth, and we have just less than 2.6 billion professing Christians. So in the midst of all the conferences, the conventions, all of the meetings, we have not even closed that measure. About 8 billion people and counting upon the earth and yet we have only about 2.6 billion professing Christians. And this does not mean serious Christians. This doesn't even mean genuine Christians. Just Christians who fill the form and wrote Christian there. If we now see that from the lens of scripture, it can distill to almost less than half of it. So in as much as we celebrate the things we are doing, let me tell you the truth. The global harvest is still, the Bible says the harvest is yet full. But the laborers are few. The few that are there will become victims if we do not add more to the field. It is the reason why the fall of one becomes a big catastrophe to the kingdom. Because the laborers are few. And so, when God finds a people like this who are willing to invest a portion of their lives to be trained towards efficiency, let me tell you, you gladden the heart of God. I want to tell you categorically and with every sense of audacity that it would be about the wisest decision you've made with your life this year to invest these weeks, these months of your life to learn. You will see the fruits and the nations will turn to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15, that's what I meditate on these things. There are some these things we've been taught, from pneumatology to leadership to ministry to personal transformation, finance. You've been taught several things by your lecturers through the rain, through the sun. And the Bible says, meditate, not just know them, meditate on these things. Then it says, give yourself wholly, give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. I hate to say this, but you will think because hands will be laid upon you shortly, you will think because you've sat down under structured mentorship, 
that in itself is only potential for exploits. It does not mean in itself that you will live a life of exploit. Hallelujah. There were many people in Jesus' crusades. I wonder why they were not mentioned. Where were the 72? The Bible talks about a few of the 12, but he also mentored 72. He also taught 5,000. They only ate the bread and left the word. And the Bible says we live by bread and by knowledge. They threw away the knowledge, carried the bread, even threw part of the bread and left home. And some of them ended up living mediocrely. But there were a few who meditated upon the things that he said. They gave themselves wholly to them. And the Bible records the exploits of these individuals. Perhaps they did not know the extent of their training and the kind of spiritual investment that was being done in them. He that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Hallelujah. I want you to make up your mind that you will pay attention to these things even after you are done. Meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And the Bible says your profiting will appear unto all. Now, a very quick thought and then we pray. I want to borrow an illustration that I gave recently while preaching in Ghana. Um, decisions decide destiny. This is a message now to everyone. Decisions decide destiny. Indecision is a decision itself. Decisions decide destiny. That the end point of a man's journey is a messless product of his decisions or his indecisions. And do you know, if this is true, that decisions decide destiny, then it means you must respect the information that guides your mind as you make those decisions. Whatever influences your ability to make that decision has also influenced the outcome of your life. Let me take it again. Decisions decide destiny. There are others who have decided to fail. There are others who have decided to be mediocre. They do not even know they made the decision. They would argue that it would, they did not make that decision. But decisions decide destiny. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? And God leaves every man to choose his lot in life. Whether life or death, whether blessing or cursing, whether failure or defeat, a life of excellence or a life of mediocrity. Some have painfully chosen a life of grace and glory. Others have chosen a life of excuses and mediocrity. Decisions decide destiny. The second thing I want everybody to know tonight is that your mentality, your belief system is the platform upon which your decisions are made. Your mentality, your belief system is the platform upon which your decisions are made. So if your decisions are poor, if your decisions are anti-destiny, anti-greatness, it is not really the decision, it is the belief system that sponsored that, de that decision. Every decision is sponsored by a belief system. Don't forget this. The decision to fail is sponsored by a belief system. The decision to prosper is sponsored by a belief system. The decision to be serious with God until your results speak is sponsored by a belief system. The decision to be an armed robber is sponsored by a belief system. The decision to be a world changer is sponsored by a belief system. The decision to live in a realm of excuses, blaming every other person but yourself, is sponsored by a belief system. The decision to be and remain poor is sponsored by a belief system. The decision to still remain a victim of witchcraft, a victim of attacks and yokes of darkness, is sponsored by a belief system. I know your belief system by seeing the quality of decisions that come out from you. I know your belief system by seeing the excellency of the results that eventually, maybe not immediately, but the results that immediately, given ample time, the results that emanate from your life are a reflection of the quality of your belief system. Hallelujah. Do you know that belief systems are so powerful 
that it literally defines what the nations will know you to be, whether a failure, whether a great person. Let me do an illustration. Um, please give me the bottle of water. I made this illustration in Ghana, and I want to make it now. Please lend me your attention, everyone. Look at this. What do you call this? A bottle of water. Am I right on that? Do you know that this is a bottle? The manufacturer did not necessarily make the bottle for water. It was a bottle. Can be a bottle of anything. But you name the bottle by the content that found its way into the bottle. In this case, water. The new name becomes a bottle of water. If I empty this water and fill it with oil, the name changes immediately. In honor to what content it has allowed, it can become a bottle of oil. It can become a bottle of poison. It can become a bottle of kerosene. It can become a bottle of cashew nuts. It can become a bottle of whatever. It can even be an empty bottle. These are the various names this bottle can be called depending on what content it allows. Is someone learning now? So if you call this a bottle of water, it's not an insult. You are describing what is as allowed to be in it. If this bottle is angry at the water, one benefit of this bottle is that it has the ability to be opened and to be closed. It has the ability to be opened and to be closed. This is how a mindset is. That if you are discontented with the things that, that represent your mindset. So I gave this illustration. There are many names you can be called from a belief system standpoint. You can be Joshua Selman the fool. Joshua Selman the mediocre. Joshua Selman the leader. Joshua Selman the failure. Joshua Selman the anointed. Joshua Selman the blessed. Joshua Selman the advancing. Oh, it's still Joshua Selman. But at any point in my life, the description of my destiny will be with respect to my belief system. Is someone learning now? Many of us, because of our backgrounds, you did not participate actively, in all honesty, over the content that became the initial composition of your mindset. Many of us were conditioned environmentally. You grew up seeing things and you knew things to be that way. But in everybody's destiny, this is a message to everyone. God gives you a chance through the journey of your lifetime to choose whether to leave that content the way you found it or take advantage of the grace of God to begin to change it. So it's possible you came from a family made up of witchcraft and defeat with all due respect, maybe a polygamous family and all you saw was hate and whatever it is. You can get to a point in your life where you say from this day forward, I make up my mind to empty this content. It will be a journey you've never taken before. It's a virgin dimension, but that you are saying, knowing that I have the power to redefine my destiny. And you can pour out the mindset of failure, hatred, the mindset of blaming people and blaming things, poverty and mediocrity. Are we together? A mindset that has no regard for growth. You can pour away that mindset and receive with meekness another kind of belief system. Now, what I did not tell you is that nobody has the ability to choose consequences. You do not, you cannot choose consequences. Consequences are connected automatically to decisions. You are given the liberty to make decisions, but with every decision will come a consequence. Failure is a consequence. Poverty is a consequence. An excelling life is a consequence. Victory is a consequence. A preacher is a consequence. An armed robber is a consequence. I have taught you here, if you recall, that if you put one person by my left and the other by my right, and you call the one person by my left a preacher, and you call the person by my right an armed robber, if both of them just become dead bodies here, you don't call the dead body a preacher, and you don't call the dead body an armed robber. So who was the preacher? The preacher was the belief system. The armed robber was also the belief system because now the bodies supposedly have equal value. What made them different? What is the difference between a CEO 
and with all due respect, someone somewhere who is at the lowest levels of life, it's not necessarily their size, they may even be blood brothers. The difference is that they have been given this gift by God to open or close their mindsets at will. And others openly to rubbish, they openly to cunningly devise fables. And they allow themselves to be filled with things that are not excellent. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 8, Finally, brethren, it says, whatsoever things, give it to us, are honest, are true, are honest, are just, are pure, are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, it says think on these things. You have the ability to culture your thinking. You have the ability to invest on this project of transformation. The students who are graduating now have decided as an act of their will to work with the Holy Spirit and allow for this process of transformation. Your life today, this version of you, is a testament of endurance. It is your telling your destiny that I cannot be the way I came. I came from a family, say, of witchcraft. I came from a family of failure. But I know that the one thing God gave every man that only death can take away is the power to decide. The prodigal son lost everything except the power to decide. And he used that same ability to bounce back. He said, I will arise. The Bible did not say the Holy Spirit spoke to him. I will arise as an act of my will. Lose any other thing in this life, but if you still have the power to decide, you can decide to start again. You can decide to rise again. You can decide to be anointed again. It is on the basis of the will that we can say, rejoice not over me, my enemies. It doesn't matter how my yesterday is. I still have a gift. I may lose money, but not that gift. You may lose reputation, but not that gift. Like Samson, you may even lose certain dimensions of your grace, but not that gift. That gift can help any man to bounce back again. Now listen, there are many people who do not know that the same energy it takes to complain, to give excuses and to blame is the same energy it takes to decide to move forward. The energy it uses, the energy that is required to complain and grumble and give excuses is the same energy it takes to make decisions. On the one hand, someone is using the energy left to say, I will make up my mind to know God. I will make up my mind to live a victorious life. I came from a poor family, but a poor family will not come out of me. I came from a family of witchcraft, but glory will come out of me. My children will be called blessed. I, I suffered serving idols. I know the curses that came upon my life, but I've made up my mind that my children will be royalty, serving the Lord. As at the time you are making that decision, let me tell you, the devil will lie to you as though you are just speaking gibberish. But the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. You begin to re-engineer your mentality that though my beginning be small, my latter end shall greatly increase. So what if I came from a family with no light? So what if I came from a family where I had to trek to the well? That was my yesterday. The beautiful thing about yesterday is it is never allowed to come into your today except you allow the mindset that brought yesterday to follow you into your today. Is someone learning? If you choose to be a preacher, you can be called a preacher. The preacher is the mindset. If you choose to be a failure, the failure is not your body. It's not the sound of your voice. It is the content of your belief system. What turns a man from a failure to a success? It is the journey of transformation. That mental transformation by the spirit. The Bible says, whom the God of this world had blinded their mind. This is what Satan does. He blinds your mind so that you give up and you feel you cannot amount to anything. And we live in a culture that endorses these wrong belief systems. Look at me. Do you know what a stronghold is? A stronghold is a demonic presence that builds fortification around faulty mindsets to keep the victim perpetually in that thought line. So when the devil comes, do you know every evil depends on a certain mindset it must connect with to manifest. Every prophecy 
depends on a certain mindset. There is what God will tell you and it will fall like a lie because the mindset requirement, biology teaches us that there has to be a union. Am I right on that? There's something that comes from the man, the seed. There's something that comes from the woman that produces life. This is so in the spirit. When the word comes, there is a mindset like a womb that must receive it. And in the physical, we have something called barrenness. The inability of the womb to receive seed, retain seed until it delivers a child. That is also true in the realm of the spirit. That there is a certain kind of mindset that can make the word of God no matter how powerful of non-effect. So it doesn't matter what God says. There is a belief system that partners with prophecy. When he told Abraham, I will make you the father of many nations. I hope you know that for a long time, Abraham did not have the mindset that would connect to that prophecy. Once and again, God will come and say, Abraham, I'm here again. One time God said, I need to help this man because this guy does not know the extent of the blessing. He said, Abraham, leave your room. I need to walk with your mind. Count the stars. Abraham would count and give up, count and give up. He says, so shall your seed be. Finally, Abraham believed God. The Bible says it was credited like an alert, credited to him that he is now righteous. He can now receive that which I have said. There are many of you who have great things that have been spoken concerning you. But every prophetic word has a mindset requirement. Causes require a certain kind of mindset to work. Just generational causes are enhanced by generational mindsets. There is a mindset that follows every cause. The day that mindset refuses to partner with that cause, it dies. It dies. So when spirits want to perpetuate certain patterns, what they do is they become guardians of mindsets, not guardians of outcomes. Demons don't bother on outcomes. They bother on mindset. There is a way if you keep thinking you will remain poor. It doesn't matter what job you get. There is a way if you keep doing ministry, you will fail. It doesn't matter which country you go to. There is a way if you live your life, you will be defeated, even if Satan is not in existence. Belief system. Belief systems. There is what God can tell you right where you are. And you say, Lord, I have heard the word. My own assignment is to walk with the spirit of grace. To build the mindset that connects to that prophecy. My dear people, listen to me. This journey called the school of ministry is an attempt to program your mindset. So that the things that have already been spoken concerning you in redemption can now expression in your life. Are we together? It is everybody's responsibility to journey with the word of God, journey with the Holy Spirit and get to a point where you begin to, dis to construct wrong mindsets. Wrong mindsets. The weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Listen to the pulling down of strongholds casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. It says, bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Imagine with me an individual who has a mindset of hatred, jealousy, dishonor, prayerlessness, carnality, unseriousness. Paint a picture of such a person. Help me describe let me tell you the truth. Mindsets have prophetic capabilities. They don't predict your future. They show it with accuracy. Mindsets have prophetic capabilities. Show me your mindset with the intelligence and the accuracy of an artist. I will draw your tomorrow. I don't need to be a prophet. I don't even need to have the gift of the word of knowledge. Just give me a chance into your mental space. Give me a pen and paper and I'll begin to draw your tomorrow. And if that mindset remains that way with uncanny digital accuracy, that destiny will be cast. Show me a man who was born in pain and failure and misery. And then he's paid the price with God, submitted to structured mentorship to now begin to recalibrate your thinking 
I show you a man whose yesterday will never be featured in his tomorrow again. But show me a man who keeps giving excuses, wrapped up with pride, believing that one day it will be better. I show you a man who has entered a journey of recycling pain, recycling pain, transferring that pain to his children and to his children's children. Prosperity requires a mindset to manifest. The anointing requires a mindset to manifest. Victory requires a mindset to manifest. Leadership requires a mindset to manifest. Excellence, a mindset to manifest. This charge is to everybody. There is no point in your life where you should be satisfied with your current mindset. The possibility for growth exists. Remember my illustration. It is within your power to open that bottle again and say from this day forward, I pour out this content of dishonesty, of mediocrity, of prayerlessness, of blaming people, of jealousy, of giving excuses, and all of that. I, I empty myself. Fill me with wisdom. Fill me with power. Fill me with faith. Fill me with diligence. Let me understand that if it will ever happen, it depends on me. Men can change if their mindsets can change. Men can grow if their mindsets can grow. Men can be wealthy if their mindsets can be wealthy. Men can be anointed if their mindsets can be anointed. Your life will be a reflection of what your mindset has become. Excellence is a mindset. Failure is a mindset. I taught in Ghana contrasting the loser's mentality and the mentality of a victim. When the Bible says, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph, that prophetic word will remain barren in your life. You want to become a powerful man of God, taking the nations for Jesus? It is more than oil. The value of the oil is that it comes upon a transformed mind. When the anointing comes upon a mindset that is still holding on to yesterday, the anointing will have to wait until the day the mindset changes. Do you know the oil the woman had in her room, the wife of the late prophet, it would have remained there forever with potential to change her life. But the size of the vessel that the oil was poured in was the reason why the oil looked small. The prophet said, I know your problem. You don't need more oil. Go and borrow more vessel. Expand your thinking. Add other dimensions to your thinking and see the kind of preacher you will become. Add other dimensions to your mindset and see the kind of businessman you become. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen, let me tell you something. Um, I think it was last year or so, I traveled to a particular place. I would not mention the name. And I think I just returned and then I, something took me home or so and I saw around my environment the same old buildings I saw as a child. The same old people. Some of those people as a baby were very prosperous people. Now they had faded. I mean they had faded and I said, God, this is not your will. My Bible says they that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the court of our is the meaning of this thing and the Lord reminded me again that he's not responsible for deciding men's realities he places before men life and death he places before men blessing and cursing he cannot force you even at the detriment of your eternal destiny you can choose to tell God I am not interested in being born again and he will respect you unto your damnation To the 2024 class, we've been given a rare opportunity by the God of all grace. Out of 4,500 students thereabout, God has granted me grace to have come this far. Do not waste that investment of the spirit. You are about to receive an impartation. Now the grace can work because the mindset has given space. And it's a plethora of graces in one touch you will be receiving. A plethora of graces in one touch. Your heart must be open. There is wisdom among the things you'll be receiving. There is favor among the graces you'll be receiving. There is a hear ye him anointing among the graces you'll be receiving. There is a grace that attracts men, quality men, men that stand with you, men that support your vision. There is a grace that provides the staying power, enduring until prophecy manifests. There is 
is a grace that makes you a sign and a wonder. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we, not I, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. And while this impartation is happening, let me encourage everyone, this is not a show of just watching people fall under the anointing. Right where you are, you can begin to make resolutions. My life cannot continue like this. My life cannot, I cannot hate my father, I cannot hate my mother, but I came to church tonight to decide, like this bottle, I will no longer be called a vessel of failure. I will no longer be called a vessel of dishonor. I am ready to partner with prophecy and to begin to rewrite my possibilities, to partner with prophecy, begin to rewrite my reality, that I will not just be an empty talker. My life will show that I am Bula. My life will show that I am Hephzibah. My life will show that I am a well-watered garden. Can we begin to pray in one minute, everyone? Just take a minute to just pray in the spirit. I desire change. I desire transformation. My life is still inconsistent with what the word says should be. My finances still inconsistent. The level of influence still inconsistent. My health still inconsistent. It is given to every man by the power to choose to rewrite your destiny, to rewrite your possibilities, to redefine the outcomes of your destiny. Someone take a minute and pray. To all our students, pray one prayer before we get to the impartation. Father, every grace available for the making of my destiny, I open my heart to receive. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. As hands come upon me, let it launch me to an entable dimension in the spirit. Someone is praying. Great. 
Romans chapter 13, verse 31. The oil is a mystery. 13, 31. Give it to us, media. Thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. This is ordinary oil. It comes from a tree. It carries no power on its own. But it is a mystery. It can be a conveyor of divine power and divine grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the mystery of impartation, you have granted us the grace, some and some help. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that as hands come upon these people, in the name of Jesus, every grace that you have deposited upon this life and upon this house, Lord, freely as it has been received, freely, let that grace in its fullness be poured upon your people. Turn them into signs and wonders to the glory of your name. And I pray by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit that this anointing from this moment, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the hand of God rest upon it in the name of Jesus for signs, for wonders. In Jesus' name we pray.
everything that came with your background that has the potential for stopping you as far as destiny actualization is concerned. By this anointing, I decree and declare, be delivered now. Be delivered now. By this grace that is upon your life, I prophesy over you, go forward. Go forward. I release that grace. Go forward. In life, go forward. In ministry, go forward. In your career, go forward. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I place a mark upon you. Anyone that fights you goes down instantly. In the name of Jesus, everyone who fights God's program over your life goes down before your faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare speed upon you. Someone you catch that grace and you begin to run like Elijah. Speed in ministry. Speed in destiny. In the name of Jesus. I speak to you according to Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. The men that God has raised to stand by you. The men that God has raised to support you in business, in ministry, in career. I decree and declare by the spirit of prophecy, may they gravitate towards your destiny. May they gravitate towards your destiny. May they gravitate towards your destiny. What your father could not do, what your mother could not do, for their sake and for the name of Jesus, I empower you to do it. The milestones they could not cover, may you cover that and even more. In the name of Jesus, if you came from a defeated family, a defeated family will not come out of you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare you will serve God with integrity. What they say cannot be done. May you be a record breaker. In the name of Jesus, your life will bring great glory to the name of the Lord. Your witness, the efficiency of your witness will bring great glory to the name of the Lord. Because of you, many will come to Jesus. Because of you, many will love Jesus. In the name of Jesus, for those of you called into the ministry of kingdom financing, I place grace upon your hands. Fire upon your mind. Go and prosper. Break financial barriers. In the name of Jesus. Everyone here who is called into the fivefold ministry, you will not be a disappointment to the Lord. You will not be another casualty waiting to happen. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will stand behind you as a mighty, terrible one. He will defend his name over your life. Go and do exploits. Everything gives birth after its kind. I release you to do exploits. In the name of Jesus, I release you to do exploits. Regardless the nation, regardless the state, regardless the territory, go and do exploits. In the name of Jesus Christ. pray for you, whatever it is, some of you should have entered certain dimensions in the spirit and certain dimensions in destiny. But for whatever reason, maybe because of mistakes, because of carelessness, because of ignorance or witchcraft, in the name of Jesus I decree and declare, according to the word of the Lord unto his servant, that you pursue, you overtake, and without fail recover all. I say it again, pursue, overtake, recover all. Pursue, overtake, recover all. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who has asked you where is your God, may your results answer them from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. The Bible says his name was John. Verse 7 says the same, not another one. The same came for a witness. Listen, that he might bear witness of the light. That through his witness all men might believe. May this become your mandate from today. You will bear witness of the light. 
that through your witness in every area at all, men will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And therefore, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the privilege of apostleship, I stand in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, and I declare this set, School of Ministry, Zaria Campus, 2024 set, in the name of Jesus, we declare all of you graduates in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Celebrate yourselves. Let's give them a big God bless you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please be seated. Just guide those under the anointing. Please be seated. Thank you everyone for your patience. We're making great progress already. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a minute for everyone to settle down and then we'll go quickly to the next, the next, um, amen, hallelujah. Now just a word of encouragement to someone, you will think all of these prayers because they are not part of the school of ministry students. You see, there's something about the presence of God. Anywhere there is hunger, there is a response. You may not be a school of ministry student, but from a sincerity of your heart, whether within the auditorium or scattered across the overflow, or even connecting online, from the sincerity of your heart, you can desire to carry certain graces, and you'll be surprised that you'll walk out of this place with those graces. Hallelujah. When we study church history, it was said about a man called William Seymour. He was not part of the people who were being trained, who were being groomed. He was popularly called the wild-eyed evangelist. He was really not part of those who were being mentored and trained, but his hunger drove him until he contacted genuine Christ. And so I'm praying for every other person aside from the school of ministry students. It will not be that you just came as a spectator or as one who is encouraging these people. You will also carry something out of this place today. May that be your portion. Do you believe that shout a loud amen? God bless you. Please be comfortably seated as we continue the service. Hallelujah. If you are celebrating Jesus, can you make it louder tonight? I believe you can do better than that. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Can we just take one minute and just bless and thank the Lord for that mighty impartation of his spirit? Let's just take one minute. The Bible says in Jeremiah 30 verse 19, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of merry making. And God says, I will multiply them. They will not diminish. I will glorify them. They will not be small. It means thanksgiving provokes multiplication. Can we take a minute and just bless the Lord, thanking him for what has rested on you as a student and what has also by virtue of your hunger and thirst come upon you even if you are not a student. Are you blessing the Lord tonight? Somebody magnify the Lord. Thank him. Acknowledge his mighty hand upon you. Grace for speed. Grace calls favor. Grace for signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. Grace for supernatural encounters. Power to prosper. Is somebody blessing the Lord and acknowledging tonight? It says that the communication of your faith may become effective. You need to acknowledge every good thing in you in Christ Jesus. Acknowledge what the Lord has done. Acknowledge his mighty hand. Acknowledge his mighty impartation. Acknowledge what the Lord has done for you. Thank you, majesty. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Can you say louder, amen? Is it all right if we celebrate and honor and appreciate our Father for that time of impartation? Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. To take us further in this graduation ceremony, I have the honor tonight of stewarding the session of the our words. Can we just put our hands together for the Lord? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24. It says, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. The New Living Translation says, run to win. Run to win. This school 
is so graced that we do not only award spiritual and academic excellence, we also award and celebrate moral excellence, character, humility. And so tonight, just like it's written in scriptures, there are awards that will be given to people who have done distinctly well in academics, in spiritual performance, and also those who have excelled in character, in morality, and in humility. So to start it out tonight, I'm going to be starting with uh, words that go to the most disciplined student, KSOM 2024 Zaria Campus. And to do the honors of presenting the award to the most disciplined student, we have one of our fathers in the house tonight. I would like you to please celebrate and honor with me as I invite to present the award for the most disciplined student, our father, Professor J.S. Murray. Can you celebrate him, please? Are you celebrating? Are you celebrating? Are you honoring? And the award of the most disciplined student, KSOM Zaria Campus 2024, goes to none other than Modupe Olua Eunice Rotowa. Can you please celebrate her? Are you celebrating? Modupe Olua Eunice Rotowa. Congratulations. Can you celebrate her as she goes back to her seat and also celebrate our father, Professor J.S. Murray? All right. So we are moving now into the segment of academic excellence, spiritual and academic excellence and performance. And we'll be starting with the awards that is going to the third overall, the second runner up. The third overall, the second runner up. And to present this award, I will, I also have the honor tonight of inviting to present this award of inviting Reverend Anointed Tende. Please, can you celebrate Reverend Anointed Tende? Are you celebrating tonight? Thank you, sir. The award of the third overall, the second runner-up, goes to Paul Omo Akayeme. Paul Omo Akayeme. Paul Omo Akayeme. Are you celebrating and rejoicing tonight? Scripture says to rejoice with them that rejoice. Congratulations, Mr. Paul. God bless you. Can we celebrate Reverend Anointed Tende as he goes back to his seat? Somebody, can you say it's getting better and better? Say it's getting deeper and deeper. The next award goes to the second overall. This is the first runner-up. The second overall. The second best. First runner-up. And to present this award, I also have the honor tonight of inviting one of our fathers. And I'd like you to please celebrate him heartily tonight. Pastor H.L. Tula. Please, can you celebrate our father, Pastor H.L. Tula? Are you celebrating tonight? Keep celebrating. Keep celebrating. Keep celebrating. Please, I indulge you. Please keep celebrating our father tonight. As he majestically walks to the podium. Hallelujah. And this award of the second overall, the second best, also known as the first runner-up, goes to, this is another Paul. Paul Bukar Balami. Paul Bukar Balami. Are you celebrating the Pauls tonight? Paul Bukar Balami. Can you celebrate our father as he walks back to his seat? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've been waiting for. The moment where we invite the overall best of this session, KSOM 2024. And to do the honors of presenting the award to the overall best, can you please rise to your feet as we honor and receive our father, Apostle Joshua Selman, to come do these honors. Are you celebrating tonight? The award for the overall best, KSOM 
SOM 2024 Zaria Campus goes to none other than Friday Ikechuku Akwatogu. Friday Ikechuku Akwatogu. Can you celebrate him tonight? The overall best Zaria Campus KSOM 2024. Friday Ikechuku Akwatogu. Congratulations, Mr. Friday. Can you just take 30 seconds and just bless the Lord? The Bible says to rejoice with them that rejoice. Magnify the Lord, exalt his name. This is the day indeed that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. One more time, can you shout a loud hallelujah? To take us further tonight, I'll be inviting the representative of the Zaria campus for this year to come and give the vote of thanks. Can you please celebrate Celebrate them as they come up Satan. Praise the Lord, Koinonia. Praise the Lord, Koinonia. KSOM 2024. One more time, KSOM 2024. Hallelujah. Please, can the KSOM students rise on their feet? A journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Over the course of five months, about 254 students gathered on the Zaria campus to begin a journey. That which was once good became an extraordinary journey. And today, by the mercies of God, we can truly say that that which was great has become an extraordinary exploit. We, the KSOM Zaria Campus 2024, are grateful to God Almighty for his abundant grace and mercy, bringing our training and determining. All glory be to God Almighty forever and ever. Amen. Also, we would like to express our deepest gratitude to our Father, Mentor, Shepherd, Prophet, Apostle, Joshua Selman Mimak, who through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus Christ has engineered a platform like the KSOM School of Ministry for, for the formation and the building process of change agents. Daddy, we are grateful. Thank you so much, Daddy. Thank you so much for your sacrifices. Thank you so much for your countless efforts. And thank you so much for all you do in secret to build us and transform us. We are deeply grateful. And we pray that the spirit of the Lord, may he provide you and renew your strength for the next season. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Daddy. We would like to also appreciate our coordinator. The administrative team. And our lecturers for teaching, instructing, encouraging, as well as building us. We are really thankful, sir. Your commitment and resilience to God's mission and kingdom come has really, really been inspiring. We couldn't have asked for more than what you've been to us. We pray that the Lord will reward you richly in collaborating with him to create agents of change out of us. We really miss your mentorship, teaching, and friendship. We are also grateful to our ministers, heads of departments, and to all leaders of Koinonia Zaria. Thank you so much for your love, your effort, your sacrifice to actually build us and take us this far. We are deeply grateful for your support. And we say that may the good Lord bless and renew your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. 
and to our families, friends, and loved ones who have shown us great love, patience, and understanding while contributing to our creation and significance. We pray that the Lord will bless and honor you all in Jesus' name. We cannot, we cannot fail to express our heartfelt gratitude to the leadership and membership of Christ Gospel Church Zaria and Rema Chapel Zaria for their kindness, understanding, hospitality, and sacrifice for us. We pray that the Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Finally, to our dear grad ones, to my fellow grad ones, <laughs> you are extremely grateful and privileged to be a part and to serve alongside you. I am truly confident that the bond of perfection which is love, will keep us knitted together. It is often said that um, the end of a journey is the beginning of another journey. And that which we have begun, the Holy Spirit will continue to inspire us and take us to the nation as our Father has taught us. We have lots to carry on this mountain, but the king's business actually requires haste. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as our Father has taught us that we will all know ourselves, but the best part is that we will all be great. KSON 2024. One more time. KSON 2024. Therefore, on this note, Go and peace his majesty. Thank you so much, and God bless us all. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. One more time, congratulations to all our now graduates. Please be seated. God bless you. Um, just to thank again the coordinators. Many of you do not know what they go through. Um, it's, it's been quite a journey. In all of us, I believe for most of them, they'll be on their way to Abuja. They'll be having that of the Abuja campus on Sunday. So make sure you pray for them, sow into their lives, bless them. They have ruled well and they're worthy of double honor. Praise the name of the Lord. In a similar vein, I want to thank all who came from Abuja. Uh, we have the leaders and many other people. Let's honor all the heads of department, all the leaders who have come um, all the way. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I particularly want to thank the heads of department, Zaria, your head of department here in Zaria. Please stand, stand. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for, I've, I've often said that you know the quality of your leadership when you are not around. These gentlemen have done an incredible job um, holding forth the things that we stand for and doing great for the kingdom um, even without our presence. So may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate, please sit, I want to appreciate every family that came here to rejoice with our loved ones and also to encourage us. Um, everyone belongs to a family and when your family people do well, rally around them and celebrate them. Are, are we together now? There are families who only meet their loved ones in the police station. Because of the kind of trouble they always provide. There are families who always meet their loved ones somewhere, maybe some in some dear palace somewhere. So when you find your child in the house of God, growing and building, this is particularly for parents. I think we, we don't do that with all due respect. I don't see, we don't do that a lot, particularly in the middle belt and around the north. When our children excel, we just leave them and hope that they do well. Then when they become great, we now come to claim a stake in their lives. You must be part of the journey. Are we together? Learn to celebrate those who do well. If they have endured their learning, God, some of these people were not born again when they came around, but now God has shown them mercy. And so I want you, don't just come around, celebrate them, let them know you are proud of what they have done. You see, don't downplay the influence of um, parents, guardians, and loved ones over their children. There are many children who would not decline if their parents always gave them this reaffirmation that you are doing well, we appreciate you. 
So for those of you who came here to cheer the students, I salute you. We are honored to have you. And may God bless you for making the time to come and celebrate with um, your children, your wards, in whatever capacity. And for those of you who know these people, you might not be related to them by blood. Do well to extend a warm welcome. It shouldn't be that someone would labor this much and then there's nobody to tell them congratulations. In fact, if I were you, I would not even need to know anyone. After the grace, I would just walk up to someone and say, I don't know you, but congratulations. You're a testament of endurance. Hallelujah. And then um, I hope that by the end of the year, um, we would open up doors for 2025 uh, um, session. So make sure you look out. Once, once the doors are opened, make sure you are ready and available. Again, we still run uh, the Zaria and Abuja campus. There's, there's a, a demand globally, and we are hoping that God will grant us grace to um, hopefully in the nearest future come up with an online expression. We are studying other Bible schools to see the model that they have used. And um, there's been a lot of um, proposals of collaboration with um, certain universities, particularly in the U.S., to see how we can collaborate to still to lift up the standard of the School of Ministry and then begin to run programs affiliated to those colleges. So there are many things on the line. We are hoping and trusting that God will grant us grace um, to do well. One thing we know is that in the nearest future, we will be proud to have been part of the training process here in the School of Ministry. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. All right, this very quickly is to our workers. Workers, we have... Uh, Workers meeting tomorrow, 7 a.m. prom. 7 a.m. is when we are starting. The venue is not here. We are using the All Saints. Um, thank you. The All Saints Cathedral. So please make sure you don't come here. You'll be alone. Make sure you go to the All Saints Cathedral. 7, that means by 6.30 latest, you should be on your way. It's going to be a great time um, to meet together, pray, discuss a few things so that those who travel can be on their way. The meaning of that is that as much as possible, uh, let's see how we can tidy up every other thing after the service as fast as we can so that um, the workers can go and have a bit of a rest and then um, be prepared for the meeting tomorrow. Let me take a few announcements and then I appreciate again, our fathers, um, I, I spotted um, Professor Jari and Professor Olakinli. God bless you, sir. We honor you. And I believe their wives, God bless you. Please, let's give them a big God bless you. I spotted them somewhere there, and I requested that they take them there. God bless you. We're honored to have you around, sir and ma, in Jesus' name. Okay, listen carefully for the following announcements. Next service will be on the 23rd. 23rd at 5 p.m. That will be Sunday, so there's no service on Friday. Next service will be on the 23rd. Um, venue will be here. Please invite everyone, your friends and your loved ones. Um, I announced this earlier on, but let me repeat it since I'm reading from the notes. The workers retreat for tomorrow. It will be Saturday 17th. Time is 7 a.m. prompt. Venue is the All Saints Anglican Multipurpose Hall. And um, please, the retreat is strictly for the workers, workers alone. The ushering department is open for new members. I'll read as they wrote it here that they are looking for serious-minded people. So you please take note of that. People who are teachable and committed to serve. I'm sure maybe they've had people who did not demonstrate um, seriousness. So make sure that if you're applying, you are willing to serve. So that we don't waste the chance of other people. It's good to serve in the house of God, but it's good to be willing to serve. Hallelujah. For those who are interested, please... You are requested to write your application handwritten address to the head of department, ushering team. You can submit to any of the ushers, and you can also meet them after service for more information. Now, you notice that the reason why we're able to finish on time for the School of Ministry is because we cut away the presentation of certificates. It takes a lot of time. It takes between, say, 30 minutes to one hour because there are a lot of students. So we decided to cut presentation of certificates that would happen immediately after the close of the service all KSOM graduates now should kindly remain seated you are mandated
designated to remain seated. There's an order that you've been arranged. Please remain there. And then your certificates will be given to you. After which, if you want to snap, cameramen, please be available for them. And then protocol, give them the liberty to have their photos, whether in group or as individuals. Do it in an orderly way so that they can have um, their photos and then you can collect your certificates. The prayer department invites the house to her miracle service preparatory prayer meeting. The date is Tuesday, 20th of August. Time is 4 p.m. The venue is Rema Chapel International Churches, just at the end of this street. Um, please do well, whether you are a member of the prayer department or not, you can connect with them and pray. It will be most profitable for you. Security alert. In view of the security situation within the nation, we encourage everyone to be security conscious. This is um, a formality that we always do after service. Please make sure that um, you are alert security-wise. Have the protocol number. If you do not have the number uh, of our protocol department, please do well to have it so that you are able to reach them should the need arise. We are also encouraged um, to avoid blind sharing and posting of violent you know, an incitive post on your um, social media page so that you don't attract trouble for yourself. Wisdom is profitable to direct. And um, I think that should be the Lord will keep protecting us all in the name of Jesus Christ. We are also encouraged to minimize, particularly for the ladies, minimize, you know, traveling to dark areas alone late at night. Uh, by now, you should have organized your life so that in good time, you are back home. This is for your safety. This is for your protection. First for the ladies, but it, uh, it extends to everyone. So please take note. I'm told here that the welfare department has snacks and chilled drinks for sale. Um, it, remember, it's for sale, so don't join any queue expecting to receive free. Please patronize them. They made it for you. Patronize them. You've prayed. You've worshipped. You're hungry, clearly. Patronize them. Encourage them in Jesus' name. And then I'm told that all children, all children, when we say children here, we mean ages 0 to 10. Please, if you are more than that age, don't embarrass yourself. 0 to 10 should wait at overflow one outside. Uh, usually when I come like this, we have a package for the children. So please, parents, don't let your children come and be crying around. Do allow them to pick their package so that we don't have children crying that they did not get... Um, their package. There's free but limited bus transport immediately after the service. All those who are going to Congo and Chica, please kindly wait in front of the LED at Overflow 1. You'll be organized to your vehicles and then you'll be on your way to um, the respective points where you head for your homes. Take note finally of our ministry account details. Um, you can use it. These are the only accounts that we've released for people so any transaction you're doing outside of these account details, know that you're dealing with fraudsters. Have it for yourself and have it for anyone who you would need to help. Uh, in a similar vein, please take note of all the official lines for Koinonia Global, our PR lines. I don't have that projected. Maybe I thought you would have that while I speak. Um, so I don't have to read out the numbers. Else, um, we can just post it afterwards. The protocol line for Koinonia Global, Thank you. And then um, protocol line for Koinonia Zaria. So everyone in Zaria, you should have the protocol line for Koinonia Zaria. And then the media, for the media department, the finance department, and also take note of the social media handles for Koinonia Zaria. Uh, it's Koinonia Global Zaria Facebook, and every other uh, handle is at Koinonia Zaria. So please take note of it. Make sure you participate. The media department labor day and night to make it active for your growth. Make sure that you connect with them so that it's not that they are wasting their energy. Everyone in Zaria should be part of the social media platforms for Zaria. Even if you're connected to the global platform, being that you are here, make sure you connect. It encourages them and then invite others to everything that is done globally. They also reflect it on your page. So make sure you do well um, to connect with them. Hallelujah. One more time, we want to honor our father, Professor Mari, for taking his time. Please give our daddy a big God bless you. Thank you, sir. We do not take your love for granted. We also want to thank our father, Daddy Tula, 
Thank you so, so very much. In the name of Jesus, uh, mommy is silently seated behind Dr. Mrs. Um, Onu. I'd like us to give her a big God bless you. Thank you, mommy. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. One more time, please, let's honor Professor Joy and Professor um, Olakunle. Thank you so much, sir, and your wives. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Um, if you are here and you're a man of God, perhaps you are outside, you're in ministry, and you were not recognized or honored, please know that we honor you. We're a house of honor wherever you are. We thank you for making the time. And then the parents of uh, the graduates too, let's just give a round of applause to cover every other area. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Dr. Anointed, thank you so much for making the time. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Um, we're done for tonight. Please rise as we close the service. Now, please let me make an appeal that as soon as we're done with the service, um, all those who wait behind at all for counseling, please ensure it is necessary. We need to release our workers as, as soon as possible so that they can go and rest. So if at all you're waiting for counseling, let it be necessary so that you don't frown at being embarrassed uh, by the protocol department. Um, there's no waiting to greet, particularly. I'm happy to see you. I can tell you that from the depth of my heart. If that is why you want to see me, then it is done. God sees your heart. I see your heart. So please be on your way home immediately after service so that we can cut on some of these things and not wait until 1, 2 a.m. Sometimes it's a lot of stress on our people, and then some of them stay far. We want to make sure that they go home on time. Um, praise the name of the Lord. Then apportion designated areas if the need arises for the students as they snap their photos. And then give them the liberty maybe for the next 10, 15 minutes so that they can have their photos since we are not able to do that. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's lift our hands and thank God for a successful graduation ceremony. Bless his name for the graduates bless his name for the grace to have been a witness to this ceremony i want you to decree and declare from the depth of your heart that you are going from glory to glory that every grace that has been released upon them will rest upon you too in jesus name we pray I speak over your life in the name of Jesus for the remaining part of the year. Let grace rest upon you. Shout a believing amen. amen. Let the favor of God speak in your life. Amen. I decree and declare where your spiritual life has gone down or is going down, I declare that it jacks back to life in Jesus' name. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar. Fresh passion for the things of God. I separate you from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. I call you a soul winner in the name of Jesus. Your life is actively part of God's program in the name of Jesus. Hear me. No one who witnessed this service tonight will be buried in death in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that every plot of death over your life, whether by accident, by assassination or any kind of demonic attempt you are exempted from it now in Jesus name because you are here may the Lord bless you and bless your loved ones wherever they are represented I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus they are covered for your sake they are protected for your sake in the name of Jesus 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 I know that there's been a lot of economic challenge, you know. I need to speak over your life on this wise before we end the service. Um, I was very humbled and touched when I came around. I saw so many people around my house. Usually, you know, people just hang around children. Um, all I could just see is just hunger. I know that there's a lot of hunger in the land. I want to speak over your life. Um, God always has an exemption package for those who are careful and attentive to his ways. Are we together? Yes. That when there was darkness in Egypt, there was still light in Goshen. Therefore, I pray for you. By the ministry of destiny, help us. May my God sort your finances. For the remaining part of this year, I forbid you from begging. Say amen. I forbid you from borrowing. 
you will not get into financial troubles. The favor of God will rest upon you. Help us will come in their numbers to rescue you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Together, let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. Ah, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My apologies. He just reminded me that I was yet to make the altar call. I can't remember how I forgot this. Forgive me. You need Jesus now and you need Jesus fast. The business of Jesus is no longer something to think about daily down. There are people who woke up this morning on earth, but they are now in hell because they rejected Jesus. I'm not scaring you, but that is the honest truth. Whether you are outside or you are in this place, I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Ye must be born again, the Bible says. You can choose to reject Jesus, but the Bible tells us that no man comes to the Father except by Jesus. So let me give someone an opportunity. Perhaps you are coming from the overflow outside or you are here. Most of the people here are the students, but we are not taken for granted. I want to count one to five for the sake of one or two people who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity, I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. As we count one to five, please allow those who will be coming from outside to come quickly. You will come and stand in front of the stage here. You are rededicating your life to Jesus or you are making this a first time decision. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Let's appreciate them as they come. You are saying, Apostle, I cannot allow this service to be over without making this decision for Jesus. Is there anyone who is coming? If you are coming from outside, God bless you. Thank you. If you are coming from outside, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my friend. Please come. God bless you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Let's celebrate them as they come to Jesus. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm afraid. The devil is a liar. Come. I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. You can find tonight what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. Please come. Come. We were to share the grace, but the Lord interrupted us for your sake. Don't waste this moment. Come. Come. Three. I count to five and we begin to pray. Koinonia celebrate a bold brother, a bold sister who is finally winning the war of destiny tonight. I salute your courage. You are coming to Jesus. He is able to save to the uttermost. He is able to give you a new beginning right here and right now. Final count, five. If there's anyone coming from outside, please hasten their step so that they come quickly and then we'll pray. My brothers and sisters, thank you very much for making this bold decision. Would you lift your right hand high above as a sign of surrender? Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you that you are the son of God. Say, I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep the hands lifted. Father, thank you for this one's no man comes to the Father indeed except by you. You have drawn them to yourself. I pray that based on the authority of your word, we declare their sins forgiven. We call them the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Bonafide recipients of the life of God. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over their lives. The grace to live victorious Christian lives I release upon them now. And I pray that they will serve you all the days of their lives, forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.